This is Jeff Camarda, PhD, your wealth doctor with must knows about the dangers of picking financial advisors from media brag lists. And this is really close to my heart, and it, as many of you may or may not know, um, I, it, it, um, in addition to my duties as uh, the CEO of Taxmaster Camarda Wealth, um, I'm also uh, an active academic researcher, and this is my area of expertise as advisor training and ethics and misconduct and so forth. So. Anyway, Barron's Magazine says its editors check the, uh, the regulatory record of each nominee for its annual top advisor rankings and weigh dozens of qualitative criteria to ensure that it's not steering retail investors toward bad apples, according to the Weekly Magazine's editors. And we made that list of Barron's top advisors in the U.S. Please look at the disclosure elsewhere on our website for this about us. And I'm kind of, you know, glad that we don't, I guess, anymore. Uh, and mostly because uh, the, the, the advisors on that list now are just huge in terms of the assets that they manage. Some, apparently, according to this information, may be a bit inflated. Um, so uh, the, the Barons might do better to check, for instance, country club membership lists, well, of all things. One advisor who touted his Barons credentials as a top advisor was booted from a country club for cheating in golf tournaments and was permanently barred from the industry on fraud charges, during the department of the investment industry on fraud charges subsequently. He misled and corralled clients into commission accounts when fee accounts were more appropriate and route to leading his team from six to, to six million to ten million, depending on the year annual revenue, according to what uh, to a consent order he filed with the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority without admitting or denying the findings. Um, this advisor who co-chaired uh, um, the, um, his group, uh, regulators and many advisors, cautioned that investors who ignore character and disciplinary histories do so at their peril. But given the data and the, disgra and the disgraces, really, that have befallen some Barron's top advisors, relying on lists as a guide could compound the difficulty. An average of 60%, this is a big deal, an average of 60% of the advisors of Barron's hallmark list of top 100 financial advisors over the, the, the study period had at least one customer complaint, regulatory action, or criminal conviction disclosed on their broker check records. In comparison, only 7.8% of all advisors reported a misconduct disclosure at some point in their career, according to a recent study uh, by some of my pals, actually, uh, when the study was done at the University of Chicago in Minnesota, lead, the lead um, researcher is now, at, uh, is now at Harvard. But that's a big deal, right? 60% of the advisors on the best advisor, the top advisor list, had some history of misconduct, whereas the average advisor, all advisors, only 7.8%. So that's almost, what is that, eight times? More. A customer complaint, to be sure, is not proof of wrongdoing, but since advisors and their firms regularly market the ranking as badges of honor, in the words of Barron's, the public has to carefully consider the criteria used in the publication's ranking and the credentials behind them. The list compiled annually to help retail investors find the truly great financial advisors uh, per uh, uh, Barron's. Um, the, but in testimony before the Securities Exchange Commission, an investor said he invested about 500000 with an independent broker after he saw her so prominently featured with a large photograph in Barron's listing of top 100 female advisors. The SEC was prosecuting the advisor who had registered as an advisor with the agency one year all earlier for grossly inflating her group's $400 million in assets to $1.1 billion to attain the number four spot at the top of its rank. Again, you know, it's, it's the Barron's ranking um, is, it, is weighted for how much assets are on the advisor's book. And this, this lady apparently overstated hers by almost three times in order to make the list. Now, this advisor regularly attached Barron's articles as email uh, um, the ads, I guess, uh, with her, you know, top advisor status and sent them to prospects and clients, the SEC, the SEC said in a, doc, in a document for an administrative law judge, and she ordered over a thousand copies, reprints, of, uh, of her appearance as a top advisor for marketing purposes. When she fretted to her public relations uh, consultant about her number 26 ranking, lower than, than previously, 
in her rookie year, he reassured her, I had a client number 23 last year who got calls from people looking to invest million. Anywhere on the list is good, he wrote, according to the document. Barron's officials say they go through rounds of soul searching and revise their methodologies when a listed advisor has been sanctioned. A complicated set of data points are used, particularly evaluating soft measurements such as quality of client practice and philanthropic work. We've changed the rankings formula several times over the years, an associate editor in charge of managing the rankings wrote in an email. Uh, based on some high-profile flameouts of top-list advisors over the past two years, the editors uh, must be hard at work once again. Uh, so here are some other examples. A Bellevue, Washington-based broker who touts himself as head of a major broker's top team, ranked 43 in Barron's Top 100 uh, Financial Advisors listing, published. Uh, he was previously number eight over six years. The broker firm has paid $5.1 million in damages and customer disputes tied to him, according to his broker check report. The advisor denied wrongdoing in those cases, but was still facing a complaint alleging unsuitable recommendations and a misrepresentation from a former client seeking $825,000 just on that one complaint, according to broker check. Another advisor who ranked in the top quarter of Barron's top 100 uh, financial advisors for, for, for eight years was suspended and fined for dishonest or unethical practices in the securities business. He paid annual fees to a lawyer, uh, annual uh, advisory fees, uh, the splits basically, the fees, who steered a major account to him, but the lawyer concealed them because the lawyer was not a licensed advisor legally allowed to share such fees. That's, that's, you know, that's chicanery of a high order. Another advisor who, along with uh, another big-name brokerage house, lost a $34 million arbitration case for unauthorized trading in the accounts of uh, the big company he'd recognized, co-founder, uh, and this, this advisor ranked 25 on the Barron's Top 100 list and was a Barron's Top Woman Advisor for three years. The brokerage firm, which eventually fired her, continues to encourage advisors to shoot for Barron's honors saying by putting our clients first, our financial advisors are leading the way, the company wrote on a wealth management website honoring award winners. Your level of excellence makes us proud, they said. In regulatory filings, this advisor listed a role as a member of Barron's top broker steering committee as an outside business activity, implying she was paid for her participation. Barron's officials insist in public pronouncements that the list serve a valuable service in helping the readers efficiently find what a Barron's editor and president has called the truly great financial advisors. The head of advisor programs at Barron's said the list represent the state of the art in uh, outstanding wealth management by isolating the attributes that best define excellence in wealth advisors, he asserted. Barron's finds for its readers the very best at from financial advisors that we know in the country. Regulators and consumer groups urge caution in seeking such quick solutions as top lists in searching for reliable financial advice. Barron's leads its lists with the assets under management that advisors and their firms report, a size matters criterion that does not necessarily convey quality, perhaps the opposite of it. I mean, how much time do you have? This post is based on and largely quoted from an article appearing in Advisor Hub, for which I'm indebted to my uh, longtime research partner, Dr. Stephen Lee, uh, and co-author of many of our research papers in this area of advisor misconduct and, and, and so forth. Um, uh, so thank you very much, Dr. Lee, for sharing. And until next time, sorry for the long-winded video, important stuff, and dear to my academic heart. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.